If I go in here, I immediately want to follow behind this blade. Hello there, Martin here and Stefan from Schildwache Potsdam. And today we are going to learn the absolute basics with uh, sword and cape. So, while we won't have a look at specific place of any master, we will learn the absolute fundamentals of fighting with a sword and cape according to the Bolognese masters. So this is uh, mainly uh, Achille Marozzo and Giovanni D'Alagocchia. So, first up, what can you use as a cape if you don't have a specifically made cape for you? Well, you could of course use just a, use a big uh, swimming towel or a hoodie will do just fine as well for the start. Okay, next up, how to use the cape. Let's uh, learn and so, uh, some basic defensive principles. So oftentimes Giovanni Dallagocchi advises us that the cape can actually be used to block strikes, but you have to do it in a way that you parry the strike at the opponent's forte, so the lower half of the blade. Why? Well, because uh, for one, you manage to block the blow before it really manages to build up a lot of speed and the cutting power of the sword at the strong is quite diminished. The other thing is, if you are going in, you again decrease the amount of way, the amount of space the sword uh, travels towards you, so it's again lesser velocity and if you're getting caught on the arm, there are two effects. The first one is that the, the cape bunches up if you strike against it. And the other one is a bit like, um, you might know the principle of tank armor, that if you angulate your armor, so your cape, then it becomes thicker. So if I would try to perpendicular strike to this cape, I'll just have to breach this distance. But if I go on a diagonal, this cape has a lot more cloth out of the sudden. Okay, so as Morozzo tells us, you should really uh, take your heart into your hand and go into that blow and block it at the forte. And from there, you actually don't need your sword anymore. You can, and that is the big, uh, the brick, the big pro of an offhand weapon, you can at the same time, as you defend with your cape, you can counter attack. And this counter attack in contra tempo is really hard to block for your opponent. So this is one of the big, big pluses for a cape. Next one is, and that's actually an advantage of the cape uh, in comparison to any shield, you can grapple, of course, because behind your cape, there's still your hand. So let's say there is a blow and I can't parry it at the forte because I'm too slow in my reaction time. So I probably need to combine my cape with my sword. But now any disarming motion here gets way more easier and safer because I have so much more protection for my hands to use this for a disarm and then strike in the tempo thereafter. Or another advantage, even if you don't manage to grab the, the opponent's sword, now there's a lot of cloth just hanging below your arm. So any motion of your opponent to go around this will naturally be a lot bigger. So let's compare this. If I block, for example, I managed to gain a strong bind just with the sword, so Stefan extends into to long point, then you'll see that this cavaccione or sfalzata is a relatively small motion and which leads to it being very fast for me to react to. Of course, if I manage to do everything properly, then I can still counter. But now together with the cape, I can use this cape to 
makes this motion of the opponent's sword way longer. Okay, and this gives me more time, more time to react to this or just straight up catch the opponent's blade and counter as I need. Okay, so this is the next big advantage of the cape. It's not only for blocking actively or for grappling actively, but it's still just something if you blocked with your sword that is in your way and protects your lower body half. Because cutting through a loosely hanging cape is actually quite difficult. You know this principle actually from arrow nets. And I would really uh, be interested in someone, I'm looking at you Todd, at someone proving this that a good, uh, that a good, uh, that a good cape made out of uh, proper cloth can actually stop uh, arrows to a certain degree at least. Okay, so these are the defensive qualities. What are some things you shouldn't try? Well, if the opponent thrusts at your arm, you shouldn't try to, to block this actually with your cape because it's still cloth after all and cloth is very susceptible to, to thrusts. Because your arm won't give that much as the loosely hanging cloths below will, so it might penetrate your arm. And you shouldn't really try it uh, to block the opponent's blows at the debole because then uh, your arm might be in danger like uh, Goudinho, for example, tells us. Okay, so these are the defensive qualities. What are some offensive qualities? Well, besides being able to block and then simultaneously attack, there's also a much more active use of the cape. And you should probably begin by just trying to perform strikes from above, so from left and right, and below, left and right. This pretty much feels like throwing blows with the false edge from below and with the true edge from above to not only displace the opponent's blade, but also to blind them, okay? So while Giovanni de la Gocchia actually doesn't throw his cape away and leaves it in his hand, it's still used to displace the opponent's blade. So for example, I, um, I force my opponent to perform a cavatione while I gain this overbind. And during this motion, I can use my cape to close in and block this opponent's motion while also throwing it upon my opponent. And you wouldn't believe, but this cape is actually quite a lot more heavier I think it's twice as heavy as this blade. So this is quite substantial. So if I just leave this here, this gets really hard for Stefan. Okay, the next thing you can do is of course, throw the cape away. And Morozzo gives us one specific technique that I would like to share with you in today's video. And that is putting your own blade behind the cape. So put your own tip in here and then just extend it to your opponent. Thank you. Okay, and so while you're extending this cape, you're offering it to the opponent. You want to immediately in the tempo try to follow this action up with some, uh, with some thrust or a cut. So for example, if I go in here, I immediately want to follow behind this blade. And since you're already extending your, your sword, this is, feels quite natural. What are some natural positions to hold your cape in when you're not using it? For today, I have two uh, examples for you. The first one is really easy and it's just grabbing your cape in the middle and leaving it loosely hanging above your shoulder. And from here, this pretty much becomes like fighting with a single sword, but with some 
offensive capabilities of the cape. The next one is from uh, Giovanni della Gocchia. And if you have your cape hanging around your shoulders, you take one edge, you take the other edge, you pull it around and then just loosely drop it. So it's really free if you want to throw it, but you already have two layers of cape above your arm. And if you want to even more protection, you can turn it around for four layers of cloth. Okay, so if you now want to throw it, you need to pull it a bit back, so you have no layers above your cloth, and then you can throw it towards your opponent. And then from here, if you want to bring it above your arm again, you just need to push your elbow in and throw the cape from in to outward around your arm. Okay, so I hope you like this. You will see more of the cape in the future on this channel. Make sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you the next time. Ciao! Thank you. And while you extend this cape to your opponent, while you offer it basically, you go in, <laughs> you go, something for bloopers. <laughs> <laughs>